Hello and welcome to a new episode of Computer TLC. This is my laptop that I use for writing documents and other basic stuff. This is a device that you could easily rest on your lap while you're using it. Today we will be taking a look at and giving some TLC to something that they call a laptop but doesn't look like it's suitable for use on your lap since you will crumble under its weight. Here it is, and just to show its size, here's my little doggo Betsy to give you an impression. It came in the other day, well, I had it shipped to a partial shop a couple hundred meters from my home and decided to carry it at home. Big mistake since this thing weighs a ton. It is the LQ9260 by Limited Quartz. You could refer to this as a mystery device since there is nothing about it online. I expect that there are probably similar devices like this but released under a different brand name. It was shocking to find a mechanical keyboard on this device. This of course comes from the Dutch version of eBay, where I by chance stumbled upon it for a really nice price. It looked intriguing, so I got it. Also, then I discovered there's nothing to find about it online. I expected this to have a 3.5 inch disk drive. I asked the seller about it because there were no pictures of that side of the computer. The seller told me that he thought there was a 5.25 inch disk drive in it, which made it even more appealing to me. So here on the side it is, the 5.25 inch disk drive. An interesting design. It also has this switch which enables you to change the speed of the CPU between 6, 8 and 10 MHz. On the back it has a bunch of ports, a CGA port, printer port, serial floppy disk drive port which will be interesting for a future project, a keyboard port and a reset switch. So this is quite the weird system, the LQ9260. Beneath the CPU switch there are four indicator lights showing the drives including the internal hard drive one and a CRT and LCD light. The screen size is about 25 centimeters. Next to the screen are also a bunch of controls, including reverse video, backlight, written interestingly, and a brightness control. I think it's time to turn on this computer and see what we can do with it. The seller told me that there's a bookkeeping program on the hard drive. It started booting. This is going to be a challenging screen to record. I think even more challenging than a CRT. Let me turn off the lights so the image becomes a little bit more clear. 512K base memory and 512K extended. It doesn't boot from the hard drive and I cannot hear it spinning up. All the controls work. So firstly I want to try this disk that was in the drive when the computer arrived. A weird brand I haven't seen before. When I pressed F1 the computer immediately returns with an error saying that no boot device is available. Then I resorted to trying this MS-DOS disk, which also came back with the same error sadly. I tried it a couple more times but nothing loaded and both the disk drives and the hard drive remained silent. I fear this might be a difficult machine to disassemble but anyways I flipped it over. On the bottom side there is this sticker saying model 9260 lab top. Made in Hong Kong by International Quartz, serial number 20058. Interesting. If there were made more than 20,000, why don't I see anything about it online? Let's start by removing some of the screws. Seven screws hold on the bottom cover. Surprisingly, no annoying plastic snaps. And it came apart quite easily and without a lot of damage. Seeing plastic this old can be quite brittle. Opening the case showed me a bunch of interesting stuff and a layout I did not quite expect. Very dusty though, so it's going to need a bit of a clean. This mini scribe hard drive had some stuff written on the label. At first I thought these were dates, but I'm not sure. Something to do with bytes. And then I saw the inspect sticker saying September 16th, 1987. A bunch of interesting ICs like this N80L286, which I believe is a CPU made by AMD. And this model of the 286 was especially designed for low power environments. Some other ICs, including one which almost looks modded, although this is probably a factory mod. So let's get rid of this disgusting dust, which is cooked into almost every surface of the computer. I started off with a brush and my vacuum cleaner, since this part has no electronics in it. Then I used a rag with some alcohol to clean off the rest, although I have to say that this wasn't the result I hoped for, and maybe a magic eraser will do a better job. Preferably I would disassemble the whole computer and clean the bottom cover, but I don't really have the time for that at this moment. Clean the side, notice the two big Varda batteries, we'll remove those later. 
Let's take out the hard drive and the floppy drive. The floppy drive is held in by four screws. This expansion card is a network card, by the way. So here's the floppy drive. It has an interesting eject mechanism. Let's remove the cover. It's a Canon brand floppy drive. Let me try this blank disk to test it. I think if it worked normally the disc would pop out a bit further so it's easier to remove. I got a bunch of cotton swabs to give this drive a well deserved clean and lubrication. With some alcohol I started removing the old dried up grease. This mechanism is a bit more difficult to spread around the grease on since it's not so free moving. Clean the reed head, put some oil in the motor. and started cleaning off this old lubrication to put in some new lithium grease. Although I'm not sure if that is the right grease to use. I mainly use this on 5.25 inch drives, but the old grease looks different. Then I cleaned the bezel a bit and realized I forgot some old grease near the release switch. The disc pops out way further now, so I reinstalled the top plate then I cleaned off a bit of dust on the hard drive and put some oil in the motor. Interesting to see Mini Scribe branded ICs. And even more interesting, a Reva branded IC. When it comes to Reva caps, I would call those my arch enemies at this point. I think these ICs have something to do with stepper motors. Another sticker with something written on it. Always nice to hear in the comments if you know what it might mean. Very nice dense IC board. I noticed there was a darter board hiding under the floppy drive. I wonder if this is the additional 512K. Then I started brushing off the motherboard. No vacuum cleaner this time of course. This dust was quite stubborn and it was also in a lot of the slots. I fear that it might interfere with the chips making good contact. Then I got out a toothbrush with alcohol. Gave this part another wipe, accidentally wiping away this label. Also cleaned the top. To finish it off I sprayed contact cleaner in all the socketed chips and the expansion slots and hard drive and floppy drive connectors. Of course don't forget the daughter board. Then I screwed in the floppy drive and the hard drive. Reconnected the cables. Cleaned the other parts of the case for the more stubborn parts I will get out a magic eraser a bit later. So I turn it on again. Nice that nothing exploded but sadly again the same error. Interestingly this time the C drive light blinked and I could hear some sounds coming from the hard drive. Also the floppy drive made more noises than it did in the beginning. I think for now something good to try is a different 5.25 inch drive. I wanted to start with this Shinon FZ502 I got from a Commodore PC. So let's disassemble it again, disconnect the cables, and remove this drive and swap it for the Shinon one. Which is taller than the Canon one, so I cannot screw the case together. Let's try it. Aye, the same error. Although I think that probably has to do with the jumper settings on this drive, since I hooked it up to a grease weasel recently. So I'll quickly try another one, this Copal one. Let's try this Ericsson DOS version 3.1c. Ah, same errors. Um, let's move around the jumpers. <gasps> yes, it works. Great, I feared I wouldn't be able to load software on this computer. Maybe we can see the hard drive with this installer, but it froze. Then I tried FDisk on the other version of MS-DOS that I tried in the beginning, but I think this disk is bad since on other computers it's also giving a read error. Then a game disk. Not a color monitor of course, can barely make out white. Interesting difficulty levels, general, lieutenant and private. Let's go with general. This game is called Hostages, no clue how it works but the controls are listed below. I wanted to install a different cable so I can use the floppy drive outside the case with an external power supply. So let's install it. Looks like this cable was glued down. Then I screwed close the case again. 
Oh, and in the meantime, I discovered that the mechanical keyboard is removable. Also, this part was a bit dirty, so I cleaned it with a magic eraser and also the top cover. So, we have come quite a way with this weird behemoth of a lab. Top computer. I hope that someone recognizes it as a computer branded under another name, or knows from which era this is, since it has a quirky look. Even better would be to hear what use cases this computer was used in. The next steps will be for a part 2 of this episode. We will try to connect the computer to my Philips CGA monitor, see if we can use a bunch of software on it, and even better see if we can connect the 3.5 inch drive, so we can load the Check It program on it. But that is it for now, on behalf of Betsy and me, thanks for watching.